Uh, in studio with the president of the Board of Education in Berkeley County, Pat Murphy. Mr. Murphy, good morning to you, sir. Good morning to about all of you. And Vice President Jackie Long. Jackie, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you both for coming in. Uh, let's get to the questions that you probably can't answer first. Just <laughs> yeah, we'll just put it all out there and then we'll talk about something else. You like the Watergate hearings. Yeah, I'm that's right. right. I can't answer that question. Yeah, I can't answer that. Uh, let, let's talk about what's going on in the school system. <laughs> the, the hack uh, that has disrupted... Uh, uh, technical information from uh, being used, to, uh, apparently uh, maybe shared, I don't know. Uh, what can you tell us about that, if anything? Not much. <laughs> um, I'm going to read you a statement, and um, that's about all I can we can comment on. Mm -hmm. as, as much as we'd like to go into more detail, we just can't. So I'm going to read this statement. We are encouraged by our community support and extend our thanks to our students and staff. We place a high value on maintaining the integrity and security of the data we hold in our systems and are working tirelessly with the cybersecurity experts to restore operations and furthering our investigation of the incident. I know you understand that due to the sensitivity of the investigation, we, both Pat and I, must refrain from additional discussion. All right, so uh, can you answer if any of the information was distributed or any employee is any employee information at risk of being on the dark web right now? We're not at liberty to do that right now. All right, and you, can, you can't confirm or deny whether it was ransomware? We can't. All, all we have to do is act like Paul Parrots and read our cracker statement. And you can't confirm whether ransom has been paid or will be paid if it is ransomware. We're back to the cracker statement. Well, let me go away from the cracker statement for just a second. Can you talk to us about some of the workarounds that this that you're doing now? The students are aware of the workarounds. The faculties are. Mm -hmm. What are some of the workarounds you're doing? Go ahead. You mean um, like... How are you surviving on a daily basis in the well, school? Well, we're surviving on uh, pencil and paper and... and um, Teachers are back to what they used to do. Now, I think that's probably harder for some of the younger staff, but they've all really rallied around and... Can you come uh, closer to your mic, Jack, please? And actually have found that um, students are turning in homework uh, more so than they would if they were would do it through Schoology or something like that. So nothing's been entered in the database at this point in time. Everything has been done pencil and paper or analog record as opposed to digital record is that correct so talk a little bit about how you keep up I mean you talk about in the statement you talk about how um, grateful you are that parents and and students and and um, staff have rallied around but how do you keep morale up because again the folks that I know who are on the front lines are um, are dismayed and concerned and tired and all of those things and you know concerned about their personal information that may or may not have been uh, jeopardized. But how do you what are you doing to keep up morale of staff? Well, we're trying to run statements by that can inform them of where we are, but the. The more you try, the, it's more like fighting the tar baby. The more you, you try, the more entangled you become. And um, the, um, for example, we're concerned about how are we going to get the report cards out. Uh, heard that. I, I was talking to one, my grandchild the other day, and she said, I asked her how she was doing. She said, my wrist is so tired from writing because everything's back to pencil and paper. Um, we're, we're, it, it is discouraging, and uh, we're frustrated because I, I know you all realize how open Jackie and I have been over the past in discussing, but uh, we're, we're really limited to what we can say, and that's frustrating for us, and it's frustrating for the audience uh, to do that, but it's, it's a very uh, sensitive process that we're involved in, and we just have to lock down and... and uh, any I, any, uh, any timeline uh, for I, when it'll be yeah timeline up? is the other well there's we have a I want to compliment our in-house staff uh, of, of techno uh, technology they're they're doing their work and everything and and uh, working long hours uh, and and 
it's not a docile uh, people are sitting on their thumbs process that we're involved in. I assume along one path you're trying to resolve the the magnitude of the problem. Along another path, are you doing an evaluation of what you could have done to uh, to prevent this from happening in the first place? Yes. Can yes. you speak to that? That should not. That's not part of the investigation. That is a separate path altogether. You should be able to speak to that part. Well. We, we have a difference of opinion here, what we can and cannot okay. speak. And we have to, uh, we have to uh, participate in this program with the limitations that we're placed Well, let us. me ask you this. Do you at this time know how the breach occurred? Uh, we can't discuss it even then. Okay. Next. So, oh, go ahead, Maria. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to go back to Maria's comment, ask what she asked about how everyone was coping out in the field mm -hmm. and I'm sure you, you know you as you said you've heard from other employees other teachers staff um, but I do think everybody has come together and uh, just embraced the worst thing that we could probably go through and and you thought the pandemic was the worst yeah, thing you could go through and, and, and all hands on deck I mean they're right Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, they're, Pat. <laughs> they're right there doing whatever they need to do to make this work. And, you know, I can't thank them enough. I know it's tedious, tiring, aggravating, uh, but they're doing what they need to do to for the kids. So. Is there something you can do to show um, your appreciation besides, like, a little thank you on the radio or I mean I, and I don't even know what that would be but I know that sometimes people um, you know when the going gets rough and 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 people step up to the plate that you say thank you in a different way whether that's some sort of monetary something or I don't know I don't know what do you think they were allowed Excuse me, Pat. I'm sorry. I know I always take off. They were allowed um, on their uh, professional development day. You know, they needed to be there at 8 o'clock or whenever their school started. They were allowed to come in um, later in the morning or in, in the afternoon. And they worked with their teams um, via whatever method they use um, from home. Mm -hmm. And then came in later so. So, so I had I actually had a teacher call me um, last week to ask about use of a facility at hospice and she said and I'll give you my cell phone number because you can't call me back right. at the school I mean from a parental standpoint how do you keep lines of communication open what if there's an emergency where do you how do you get in touch with your kid um, or your kid's teacher if you can't even call in the, the no, we're, school? We're, we're working our ways through things. We're scrubbing uh, equipment to do things. But uh, I had a point there and I <laughs> forgot what it was. Uh, most facilities you're able to get in, you're able to get through to the school. Okay. Yeah. I want to ask about bus service as my next question on this, Jackie and Pat, because this has been another concern that's been brought to my attention in regards to the consistency of bus pickups in the morning mm -hmm. and what the alternatives are for a kid who doesn't have another way to school other than a school bus, which can't be sent that particular day. What's the situation there? Well, it's tough. I mean, we we hire five drivers on a board agenda and five resign. So... Um, you know, there's not much alternative, but when students stay home, they can work on their, uh, they can either zoom in, I assume, or um, work on their assignments that the teacher has, was able to send home the night before because you never know when that's going to happen. So. Are teachers each day sending home an assignment just in case there isn't bus service? Uh, that I don't know. Is there a way to loop buses back for a second run to pick up kids who have not uh, been able to pick up a bus that day many many of our drivers do double runs so they're yeah, looping they, back to get kids who yes. weren't picked up on another bus run exactly. because there wasn't yes. a bus right so yeah. those kids get to school late but they do get there yeah 
So is, is this strictly a personnel issue? Is there anything else going on that there's a reason why there seems to be more empty bus lines this year? No, it's just a personnel issue. And well, I mean, it's, what it's, steps it's, are you taking to try it, to well, solve that? We, we did. I don't know if it has spilled over, but we did have a, a, a group of bus drivers in about an individual case uh, that had occurred uh, an accident. Uh, like a lot of problems, some misinformation. Uh, the administration's uh, handling the personnel matter, which we we can't talk about here on the radio. But but we do. But we we did. I I sometimes wonder if people are trying to express their dismay through a labor action. Well, but, I have, but, I, one day they did that, mm -hmm. but. From now on, that hasn't been. From the old, that point the, on, the, that the blue, the, the so-called blue flu that they used to talk about with police officers, right? Yeah, that, that hasn't sick. affected. It's just the, it's just the resignations and retirements and market and the market and trying to hire other um, drivers. What do you do actively to try to solve that problem? Obviously, finding people to work is an issue that can be out of your control. But what are you doing? Well, I mean, we're trying to recruit the best way we can, but the only thing we can do is uh, try to get raises through the legislature. I mean, well, money's the issue here. I see the, uh, the emerald here. Yeah, wants to jump yeah in here. I, I, I'm a little frustrated. Uh, okay. uh, you mentioned uh, uh, misinformation being put out, but if there's no information at all being put out through the system on a lot of things that is a an opportunity for misinformation you can't really have it both ways right well that's exactly right and and uh employees can't have it both ways we you know that we 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 can't sorry pat i just jumped in there we can't comment on personnel actions at but, all but to your point bill and you're right um we we have a very active uh, communication director in Elaine Bobo, who does an excellent job uh, of getting information out to people. But what goes on at the work site in the in the the scuttlebutt uh, that you have talking amongst each other, sometimes that takes a hold, and and we are not ahead of it at sometimes until it happens when the when the bus is not there. Yeah. And that's and unfortunately yeah. we have to confront those personnel problems. Because we're endangering children who are standing yeah. out with an expectation that yeah. it's not delivered. I, I'm a big fan of Elaine Bobo. She's an exceptionally talented individual. Mm -hmm. And I also appreciate the dilemma you and the school uh, are in. But I'm finding it to be overly common now on a, whatever the issue is we can't talk about it we can't talk about it and when you when this is the common frame of response uh the, it leads to frustration it leads to doubt it leads to misinformation it leads to every bad thing imaginable i would hope that there will be some some thought been given this whole process now and come up with a communication strategy that is more effective than what we're saying right now because just saying we can't talk about it is the very worst thing you can do well we okay criticisms well uh, well, I, I agree with your uh, your criticism, but I also I, it's an uh, observation. I guess it is a criticism as well, but it's an observation. Yeah. So. I also uh, know from um, being a, in a position where, um, with the union union president, that uh, sometimes the more you stir and comment on something, the worse it gets because more false information. You're trying to put out information, but then more false information occurs from what you've put out. So it just, just stirs and stirs and stirs. Well, and I think part of Bill's, part of everyone's frustration, Bill's especially, um, is that, you know, especially the two of you ran on um, the, the idea of transparency and <laughs> there's no way this feels like it's being transparent. Right. Well, and I think we've been very transparent, but we're, at this point with this, we are as transparent as we can get. And if people hold that against us, I, you know, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, we're we're uh, um, we we've 
we we were discouraged in the past from coming on when this broke out and we we declined for the record and you and you all know that we declined initially right after because we weren't even up to the stuff on a lot of things going on but uh, we wanted to come out and discuss in the public what's going on you all are asking good hard tough questions that you're responsible to do we respect that but we can't talk about individual personnel which might have initiated one issue and we can't discuss the uh, hacking issue uh, as our statement uh, said there earlier and you all are two for two right now and so now your frustration is coming forth and we 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 respect it. Well, let me ask you this, Pat. Uh, yes. it, it, it's is it a board decision to not talk about this, or is this an order coming from higher up? Uh, it's a every statement that Mr. Stevens puts out, or we've just read, is screened by professionals involved in this process. Are they? I, are I, they? I understand that. I just wanted to make sure that that yeah, information got not. out. It's not the two of you saying, "Look, we're just not talking about this." Would you? Are you comfortable saying who is involved in the study? Are we talking about? I know. Okay. I know it's local. I assume the state. Okay. Are the feds also involved? That's a yes to That's those yes. on the radio. Okay. So I didn't see Pat shaking his <laughs> oh, head. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. radio and, and, So uh, it, it, go ahead, Pat. Well, you, you also have Brim involved, the mm-hmm. uh, yes. Board of Risk yeah. Insurance sure. Management. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure you've been in situations when you're under county council or county commission that you had to measure your your uh, answers. I you're right. I measured, but I also always provided an answer. I had some answer. Well, but now, you, um, now, well, admittedly, you admittedly, in admittedly, anything like this. Well, no, I was, that's what it's fixing to say, Jackie. There, there's a scale to it, and I'm not in any way trying to minimize the difficult situation that you folks are in and and i know there's uh, there's some security in saying less i can appreciate that but i do think a mistake has been made that you do not try to find that the system does not try to find some information that can be provided that is that the public's looking for that would not be that would not compromise investigation that that does exist uh but the answers we get you can't comment can't comment except for this very cryptic Mm -hmm. statement that does not do any good at all that doesn't do any good to you it doesn't do any good to the school system all it does is increase the frustration increase the frustration uh, and there there's always a middle ground uh, trying of information that can be provided I don't I do not get a sense at all there's been any pursuit at all trying to find that middle ground you've taken the more conservative route and you're sticking by your guns no that's not true if there was a middle ground there you'd hear it well maybe so maybe so I have not heard. Let me shift the gears, kind of, because I think we've cured this. What about the superintendent? We've beaten this horse yeah. Yeah, what about, all the way to the ground. What about the superintendent? Can you talk about that? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. But that's personnel. Sorry. Okay. That's that okay? not, it's not that a okay? personnel that's been hired. Did I, there did you I, go. Did I shift too quick, Rob? You have another question? No, you're fine. Okay. okay. <laughs> You're the admiral, dude. When you <laughs> shift the boat, the boat shifts. No, we're going with you, Bill. Are you kidding? Whether me? we get to or not, I, I, want to or I, not. I look for guidance from Rob. If he gives me that uh, screen, yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. it's not. Just, a just read it. It's not for me. It's I, for the I do audience. want to. Uh, one one of the uh, folks who listens to this show that's involved <laughs> in the bus driving operations, uh, not in management, said to me, if children miss a bus because a bus has been canceled there is no other bus looping back to get them they disagree with your statement that there is a bus that's looping back to get them do you know for a fact that there are buses going back to get kids many times we do double runs i don't know who you got that from um it depends on what the run is all right some disagreement there uh make sure you're close to your mic jack so we can hear you that could be somebody from in transportation so all right, back to the superintendent, which is yeah. currently at an interim basis. Well, first, I'd like to compliment uh, Jackie uh, and Dr. Scoy and Elaine Bobo, because um, as a board president, I'm trying to put the membership out before the issues are brought to us, uh, kind of like a recon. So I'm involving the membership with the staff uh, rather than just, just 
having a, uh, appear on the agenda and we react to that. So we have insight there. So I asked Jackie to work with uh, the staff on the limited part. I do not want anyone in the board office to have their finger on the on the scale on the scales, uh, tipping which way the board goes on the, on the selection process. So I'll let Jackie talk about what they've done. We have a timeline here. Uh, some of those de uh, deadlines are appearing. Uh, one other point: we could not begin the search legally until after January 1st. The law actually tells us when you can begin the process. We also had to finish the superintendent's interim superintendent's evaluation by March the 1st, which we did at the last meeting. So uh, we're following the timelines. Uh, Bowles Rice has been our uh, uh, consulting attorney, uh, Kim Coyle, Coyle and uh, Howard Sufer have provided a lot of help for us. But Jackie was the uh, board member who ran point with staff on some of the points. So I'll let turn it over to her. Uh, uh, we sent out the um, a notice to apply, uh, bid the, um, uh, the superintendent position in February, and it ends on March 4th. Um, that's the deadline. Uh, we have posted that job in um, uh, both uh, paper and online in the journal, the Herald Mail, the London Loudon Times Mirror, the Frederick News Post, the Winchester Star, the Northern Virginia Daily Mail, the Charleston Gazette, the Herald Dispatch, the uh, Dominion Post, and placed on job boards in uh, Ed Week, Top Jobs, AS, AAA. SPA, American Association of School Personnel, the School Superintendent Association, Association of Latino Administrators and Superintendents, the National Alliance of Black School Educators. Um, we had an online survey, um, and we've so far we and it ended on February 19th, and we had about 12 over 1,200 uh, individuals. Um, Go for that and, and give us. You've had twelve hundred applications or no, 12, answers to the survey. Twelve hundred uh, answers okay. to the survey. Um, we've been to the chamber and um, presented a business partner, business education partnership uh, to all Peach Jar accounts posted on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, 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 and um, sent. Uh, 3,632 uh, to K-12 addresses to to superintendents or assistant superintendents or directors from uh, around the state and nation, really, and um, did a press release to the West Virginia Press Association. So, And we also, Jackie and I also sent a letter out, or no, uh, email, to all the board presidents and vice presidents and superintendents as well on our name because quite frankly Jackie has pretty statewide recognition there. Uh, so as I said the deadline is uh, March 3rd I think it's really the 4th uh, I could be wrong there and then we'll the stakeholders will get the app the board will get the applications um, well they'll update the survey results so we'll have <laughs> those by the 6th of March and then we should be be able to screen the applications by the 13th of March. So, are you doing this all by? Is the Board of Education doing it all themselves, or do you have an outside screening group that'll be working with you? How does it work? We contracted with Dr. Howard O'Call, who was who retired as the executive director of the School Board Association. He's handling all the uh, applications so that we don't have anyone in, internally doing it. And when when uh, the, when she talked about the uh, board receiving it, we're talking about just the five board members receiving the applications. So uh, local involvement has been very positive, but also hands off as far as individual pre people uh, being involved. In so it. the board as a whole will be doing the the weeding process as well as the final selection. Well, we will have professional help from the State Department of Education in a review of the qualifications of okay. candidates okay. so that we uh, we don't have somebody in the running who we find out is 
for whatever reason is not qualified to hold the job. Uh, we're just about out of time here. I want to circle back and ask if you can give any information out as to whether or not you think this situation will be resolved by the end of the school year. And I'm talking about the mm -hmm. issues right now going on in the school system, not the superintendent's job. Um, it's our hope. Yeah. But that's about all we can promise. Is yeah, it likely? I, I, I don't know. I I. I really, I don't feel confident to uh, make that prognosis. How about at the beginning of the next school year? I, I, I we're, we're trying, I mean, people are really work putting forth an effort here, but uh, there are players beyond the control. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to be a jerk here. I'm, I I'm just appreciate trying to, And we're trying to give you the answer that we know. I don't have to try to be a jerk. Yeah. I'm there, a jerk anyway. I was going to say, <laughs> there's room for only one jerk at a time this morning. <laughs> I, I think I've identified I'm the jerk. Okay. Uh, no, but in, in, we, in all seriousness. In all, in all seriousness, we expect it to be. Uh, I smiled when you came out and told me that we lost a half hour of time here. Because I thought that's a le one half hour of less dancing on a hot griddle that we expected to walk into here. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming yeah, in. Yeah. Uh, I know yeah. there's uh, limited what you can say. I'm sure you'd like to say a lot more, but uh, mm -hmm. it is what it is at this time. So thank you both for coming in. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thank folks. Thank you. You're doing a very, you're doing a great job. So. President Pat Murphy uh, and uh, Vice President Jackie Long. Uh,